Well, good morning once again. This is Sam in Wyoming. It's time for another Notes from the Wyoming Woodturner. It's February 2019. Number one, I want to make a quick shout out to Kylie Bosch. She's on the front cover of the American Woodturner this time. I should say her work is on the cover. And uh, anyway, check that out. She's an amazing young lady. And uh, she makes these really cool objects out of books. So there we go. Now I want to mention a few of my upcoming videos. These are in the queue as they say. Uh, I've got them all ready to, to publish on YouTube. One of them is on this workbench. Actually I've got six on this workbench. And I'm going to put those up all at the same time. We're wood turners and you may not have a great interest in making a workbench but uh, I want to show it to you anyway. You can, you can watch the videos, share them with a woodworker who might be interested in making a nice workbench. Okay, I've got a video on sharpening a box scraper, and that video comes from a comment from somebody on my YouTube channel. You know, can you show us how to sharpen a box scraper? Well, that's coming up. A cast resin hybrid sculpture. Okay, that's really a cool video, I think. Um, and that was inspired by Heath Knuckles, who does some amazing casting. So that's coming up. I've got two videos on making a hollow form. It's the same hollow form, but uh, one's on the outside, one's on the inside. And then finally, Beads of Courage. Um, I made a beehive box, and I'll put that one up. It may take a month or so to get all these up. Now, I got a very nice note from Peggy, and she's a wood turner in Scarborough, Maine. And I'm going to put this sticker up so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Peggy sent me this a while back, and I kind of put it aside, and I just need to do a shout out on her. Peggy has a YouTube channel, and I watched a couple of her videos, and she's a, a new turner, but she's, uh, she's pretty good, so... Now when I get done with this video, I'm going to go over on my lathe and turn a castle money box. And that's one of the uh, puzzles featured in John Barclay's book, All Screwed Up. And uh, now the other thing I'm going to feature in that video is some uh, abrasive paste and polish by Tom Ackley. Uh, I think he calls it Axe Wood Paste or something like that. I'm going to do this video and sort of... Uh, Take a look at this castle money box and uh, another way to turn that. It's going to be a threaded project, but I'm also going to finish it with, with Tom's abrasive paste and wax. But here's the main event. Um, Tom and his wife, Annette, very kindly made my wife and me this nice quilt. She's a quilter. Okay. And uh, Annette doesn't sell her stuff online. But uh, anyway, I really appreciate that. So thank you very much, Annette. And also, Tom made this. Well, actually, his wife made it. It's, a, it's an apron, and I like an apron sometimes in my shop. For one thing, great place to put my phone. So thank you very much. But more on Tom's wood paste in another video. And let's see where we go from here. Let's take a look at some questions and comments that I've gotten here. Now, I put up a video on pen turning on the cheap, I think I called it, and Larry and John both had the same comment pretty much, and it was when trimming a blank, a pen blank, it's always preferred to orient the trim surface to the bore, to the inside hole, not the outside surface. And I'm guilty of that. You know, if you... If you uh, drill a hole on a pen blank from the outside, you put it in a, a vise or something, um, that doesn't really orient the pen blank correctly. So that's a very good point. And then John Shaw writes, I have found that drilling on the lathe is far better than using the drill press. And I think he's right on that. So that's all about self-centering from the the hole that you drill. 
in, in turning that pen. I'm not a great pen turner. I like to turn pens and they're okay. Uh, here's a comment from Mike Peace. Now, Mike may watch this and I was doing the video on the pen turning on the cheap and I was drilling something out I can't remember um, using a Jacobs chuck. Now as I unwound my tailstock and the Jacobs chuck started to come out of that and it was still drilling the piece of wood. Now Mike Peace uh, commented uh, that can be very dangerous and he's, he's absolutely correct. And sometimes I get a comment that uh, kind of brings me back to reality and it's like that's okay. I appreciate that and uh, thank you Mike for bringing that to my attention. When you're drilling on the on the lathe be very very careful when you have something in your tailstock and you're drilling and you know make sure you have a good hold on that. Tony C writes how do you put a burr on a scraper? Well the burr on a scraper naturally occurs when you sharpen it. Okay now you can get a really really heavy burr on a on a scraper and I like to just take a, a a diamond hone and level that off on the on the top take the burr off and then put another burr on very lightly you can do that with um, the grinder you can also do it with a burnisher Cheryl from 10 second studio now I've got a, a lot of videos dealing with metal reactive paint and I use uh, the Verde paint from 10 Second Studio. Now Cheryl, who, who I met someplace along the way, is retiring. She is no longer going to produce this uh, metal reactive paint and she asked me to mention that in a video. So uh, I'm very sad to see you, you not producing this great product anymore, Cheryl, but have a happy retirement, have fun. And then I hope you're not more busy than you are now because that can kind of happen. I'm guilty of that. Um, now here's a comment from David. David is a blind wood turner. And uh, he wrote me a very nice note here. I'm going to you know, shorten his comment just a little bit. But basically he said, when I do a video and I put my description in it, he said that really helps him a great deal. He is a blind wood turner, so how do you um, gain something from a YouTube video that you're listening to or watching? Well, I appreciate that. And it, ironically, that is the second comment I've gotten from a blind wood turner. I think the other one was in England. I'm not sure where David is from, but that really makes me feel very good, and, and I appreciate that. Sometimes I think I'm talking too much in a video, and I've been accused of that by several individuals, so that's okay. Um, Les Dawson writes, and he had a comment about something, you know, a very nice comment, but at the end he said, do you really have to include political ads in your videos? Okay, that's a good uh, starting point for a little discussion on, on the ads that are on my videos or anybody else's. I have no say in what kind of ads are on my YouTube channel. The ads I get, like I'm watching one of my videos, the ads I get a lot of times are from a bank or an insurance company. Uh, we have um, a car dealer 90 miles away called Fremont Motors, and I get a lot of their ads. So I think the ads you get are probably a little bit more regional. So if you're in California or New York or Florida, you might get a a different kind of an ad and if it's uh, you know election season in your area you might get a political ad and who who wants that I you know we're wood turners come on um, Google Plus announces that they are no longer going to have Google Plus and I still don't really understand what it's for so if if that means something to you no more Google Plus now here's a comment on sharpening a skew chisel. And Jeff's question is, what angle do I prefer? Well, I put an angle of 25 to 30 degrees, and that's an included angle. So one side is 
maybe 15 or 18 degrees. The other side is maybe 15 degrees or so. And that included angle, which means both angles together, is 25 or 30 degrees. If you're cutting a hardwood, you may want a more shallow angle, like a 35 or 40 degree. If you're cutting softer woods, then 25 or 30 degrees is probably better there. Uh, that's a good question. Okay, now one last thing I need to address is one of my last videos was on the Record Power uh, Picks for Prizes contest. And I've got to address and respond to some of the questions that I got in the comments. You know, it's like, I don't own a Record Power Chuck. How do I enter this contest? I can't enter it. Well, I'll tell you what, I've contacted, um, I've reached out to my contact at Record Power, the person I've been dealing with throughout this, and I haven't heard back from him. So when I do, I'll get back to you and let you know exactly what the deal is there. Uh, it's very true, you, you can't enter the contest unless you have a, a Record Power Chuck in your, in your photo. Now, the other thing I'll, I'll mention right here very quickly is I implied, and I gave you some wrong information, in that one of the pictures you had to have some of the, uh, uh, oh, the packaging for the record power check. Well, who, like somebody said, who keeps the packaging? I don't. Anyway, that's a recommendation, but not a requirement. So probably more on that later. I'm just not sure what to say right now. That's not up to me. That's not my contest. I, I tried to do a good promotional video encouraging other people to join. Well, it gave you a platform to make some very valid comments, and I appreciate that. That kind of brings me back in line with reality. It's like, okay, what's going on here? And uh, I didn't mean to pass on misinformation, but maybe I did. Anyway, uh, that's the end of this video. I'm going to go over to the lathe and uh, I'm going to turn a castle money box. I think that's going to be really fun. Another threaded project. That's all we need. So thank you very much for watching. I will talk to you next time.